The 417 Gamers is a group of board, tabletop, and card gamers in the 417 area code. This is the podcast. Welcome to the 417 Gamer Podcast, episode 13, expansion episode. In this show, we have a guest stop by, Hawk from Geekmas and Fanatics and the Fan stop by for our topic of the show. We discuss Geekmas, what it's going to be, where it's going to be, and why you should go. Then in the seven, Hawk tells us his favorite seven games. And yeah, we limited them to just seven games. But we always start the show with the four. And we're going to talk about the four things that Andrea and I are either looking forward to or have enjoyed in the 417 area. Without further ado, the 417 Gamer Podcast. Welcome to the 417 Gamer Podcast. My name is Rick. And I'm Andrea. And in the expansion episode, we now talk about the events that we're looking forward to or have enjoyed in the 417 area. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a game day. Our neighbors down in northwest Arkansas, I know it's not technically 417, but it's right there at the border. Down in Bentonville, they're having a two-day board game extravaganza. At 989 Northwest McNeely Road, Biltonville, Arkansas, at the Bella Vista Church of Christ, they're having two days of board games. You can expect a Ticket to Ride tournament, a Cascadia tournament. They're going to have some raffles, and I think they're going to have a little uh, cafe sidebar where you can buy some foods. They're going to have a little lending library. If, if that sounds cool to you, uh, head over to our Facebook page. We have links to that, to the that, that event. Uh, my uncle... Mark Bag will be down there. He will uh, be helping run some of those festivities. Say hi to him. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. If we can swing it, we'd like to make it down there. But, man, our October's starting to get filled up. It always does. It always does. What's an October thing we got filled up, Andrea? Uh, well, Friday, October 13th through the 15th is Vision Con at the Springfield Expo Center. Vision Con is a pop culture comic con that is many, many years old. It's been mm. in Springfield forever. They have the traditional vending area as well as pop culture guests and a large gaming room. And they have an anime area, um, several... Um, media guests that are coming. I know for me personally, um, and I can't remember the actor's name, he was on Supernatural. He played Death mm. on Supernatural. Um, Kevin Kepi is going to be there. He is a local um, makeup actor who has really seen his career take off um, much in the way Doug Jones's has done for makeup actors and I'm really happy to see him uh, thriving in this industry nice um, at the front of November November 4th is Wing of Palooza I think this is Wing of Palooza 30 it's one of the longest running uh, wing competitions mm-hmm. uh, Wingapalooza is a great time if you love wings and like to, to scope out your favorite local restaurants and pick up some new ones. There's usually anywhere from 15 to 30 vendors serving up their best wings. Uh, you'll see Coyotes. You'll see Finnegan's Wake. Uh, oh, what's the, the, the pub on the south side of town? Dublin's. Dublin's Pass. You'll see them. Hooters is usually there. So, so is some of the, 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 the change. Mm-hmm. You'll see a Little Caesars and a Domino's pop up. But you also see new restaurants and or barbecue places that you've either never heard of or haven't tried just yet because we have tons of barbecue places oh, yeah. in Springfield. For me, um, uh, it starts at 11 a.m. goes to 5 p.m. I like getting in there right at 11. And I don't really hobnob or talk to too many people I'll say hi mm-hmm. but I move on to the next wing I get my wing fix in <laughs> and I try and I try and make it eat a wing at each booth it is a people watching extravaganza yeah. some people come in with their own platters to put their wings on I saw one person had a just a, a cup of an entire eight ounce cup of ranch uh, surrounded by a tray that they've a homemade taped together thing. Yeah. It was hilarious. But for me, it's it's usually the same weekend as the Veterans Day Parade. Mm-hmm. 
So depending on when that happens and where you're at, you're going to have to deal with the Veterans Day Parade, which is fine. But I like to stuff myself with wings and then go to one of the local parks and walk. Because I got to walk off some wings. And, <laughs> and maybe we might play disc golf. Who knows? Yeah. I played disc golf at a couple after a couple of them. Because, man, after stuffing yourself with one of our, you know, if you go to the chili cook-off, it's February. And it depends on what kind of weather you're dealing with, whether you can even walk. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to take yourself to the mall and, you know, share your chili <laughs> secrets with others as you walk. And I'd rather not. Uh, Andrea, the fourth um, thing. Sunday, October 8th, it, at the Branson IMAX, um, they're having a We Are Turning 30 celebration. Um, they've got free food, music, giveaways, door prizes. Um, so if you're anywhere in the Branson area, it start. it's going to be from noon to 4 at the IMAX. Uh, definitely go down, check it out. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the IMAX movie screen is the third largest screen in the United States. There's a larger one in New York. There's a larger one in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle, we're number three. And I remember walking into the auditorium for the first time. I was like, wow, this is a really big movie screen. Yeah. Um, So go down, say hi, and get you some free stuff. Yeah. Go watch a movie. Yeah, absolutely. So those are the four events that we have enjoyed, are looking forward to in the 417 area. And why don't we go into the topic of the month? Let's do it. Yeah, the expansion topic of the month. Oh, yeah. Expansion! The one on the 417 Gamers is our topic of the show. And for this topic, we're bringing a guest on, Mr. Hawk. Say hello to the people. Hello, hello, hello. You have an event coming up this December. Yes. What is that event? This is Geekmas is one of my favorite. This is, this is the brainchild of myself. And uh, the, the late and great David Falk and Brandon Shane and we we <laughs> we had decided a long time ago there was a gap, as you know, between uh, game mm-hmm. and Vision Con. It was a big gap to us. Uh, and well, well, why don't we get together at Christmas? Yeah, and be nerds at Christmas. There, there's a gap in the winter. There's there needed to be something for geeks in the winter because Vision Con was usually February to March. It was like the the you know, the dawning of spring. Yes. That last crappy ice that Springfield gets and Vision Come. That was the <laughs> the ending sure. of winter in the Ozarks and the start of spring. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. And sometimes <laughs> that Vision Con and that icing happened at the same time. Oh, the snowstorm here. Uh-huh. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so, uh, that was the what? The when. When is it? It's going to be December 2nd and 3rd. Uh-huh. Right here in Springfield at the Fairbanks. Mm-hmm. Uh I know the address, but it's a lot easier to look it up. We'll Fairbanks put it Community. In the notes of the show and other places. Fairbanks Community Center, uh, wonderful people. Uh, that not only are they our venue, but the Drew Lewis Foundation, who's based out of the Fairbanks, is also our charity this year. And they do wonderful people, wonderful things for, for, for wonderful people, people who need help. Nice. Uh, and a, a friend of the podcasts in this, you know. Of the uh, the Hobby Gaming Network, Zach has been on here, and he works with the Drew Lewis Foundation. That is correct. He's good peoples. Um, so you've done the where, you've done the when, why? Um, <sighs> what sets Geekmas apart? Um, the biggest thing, and this was this was a the, you ever have a happy accident and it just become the greatest thing ever? Sure. Um, when I started building Geekmas, I got a lot of vendors that came in, and <laughs> the first year I didn't know what I was doing. So I had 17 different jewelry vendors. The next year, I decided I was going to know what everybody did before they were allowed to come in and be a vendor. Yeah. Uh, and it just so happens now, our set of vendors are all unique. None of the stuff you can go buy on Amazon. This is very unique nerd stuff. Nerd niche. I have one or two retail vendors, as I would like to call them. Everything else is retail niche. You're not going to find it anywhere else. This is some of the best place to buy nerd stuff. A lot of handmade stuff, a lot of hand curated stuff, a lot of custom stuff. You have wood burners. You have people that craft things out of books, out of various materials. Uh, a lot of artists, a lot of great artists. Custom dice bags, mm-hmm. custom dice bags. I own a lot of the custom <laughs> dice bags. Uh, I, I remember I bought the first Baby Yoda bag, or sorry, the first Grogu bag they made. <laughs> hey, Baby Yoda's fine. <laughs> um, and and. 
it gives me a reason to put Rick and Andrea to work on playing board games. Yeah. <laughs> like I have to break their arm to play board games. Right? You do. You do. We're like, we don't want to play these games. And, 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 um, the other reason, what I think is fun, is, uh, as you guys know, we see a lot of costume contests all the time. And they're yeah. wonderful, and they're great. So why not throw them a twist and make it holiday-themed? Right? Yeah. Huh? That you get extra points for, for turning your your Deadpool into Santa Pool and sure. having to wear this the, the hot Santa costume yeah. right? or whatever. And it makes and it adds to the creativity. Yeah. Santa Blob. I want to see a Santa blah when somebody do it. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Professor X is a is an elf. Yeah, yeah. How much I'd like to it... see. I'd like to see some 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 stuff from board games, some players from the board games that we all play, mm-hmm. that we all know and love. I don't know that we're prepared for that. I know that that's their problem, not ours. <laughs> that's true. Uh, how much are tickets? So that's the best part about this year, and I'm proudest of this because this is Fanatics and the Fans' 10th year. Uh-huh. So as a Christmas present to all of our fans, Geekmas is free. For attendees. For attendees. Just come out to Geekmas. And have a good time. Have a good Stay time. All, all day. Ask Rick all the questions about all the games. Yeah. Unfortunately, he will have all the answers. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> it may not be truthful answers, but I will have the answers. <laughs> But it's also a, a great time to get those last minute gifts. Oh man, you have those. Uh, I I kind of hate getting gift cards for for family because it I feels like a, a cop card. out, right? And you know, going to Walmart and seeing the same bath set and the same you know mm-hmm. wallet or whatever for family, get them something a little nerd centric if they have some nerddoms. And if it's holiday themed, hey, there is going to be so many unique things there uh, a lot of anime stuff uh, uh, a lot of board game stuff yeah last uh, year we found one of your vendors that had like wand stands if you have a Harry Potter fan yes we found somebody that had various wands yes that were like studio replica specifics yep uh, if you get a book nerd in your house they're going to be book mm-hmm. they're going to be authors there mm-hmm. nice Lightsabers. There were lightsabers last year. I don't know. He hasn't confirmed yet. Ah. I did like his stuff. He no, but those really are cool. those are certain things you might be able to find. Yes, yes, you will be able to find you if you if you have a nerd in your house. Keep an open eye, s- an open mind, and, and maybe uh, talk with your family around Thanksgiving and find out what their what their jam is right mm-hmm. now. Exactly, because anime is getting so big right now and so <laughs> varied <laughs> that you might find out they like a thing, and you're going to have artists on hand that are going to yes. have. A lot of those animes covered in in various pictures and crafts and and whatnot. Our sponsor, TPS Entertainment. If you have an anime nerd in your house, you've got to come see what he's bringing. Okay. You just you he, he's bringing the entire his entire inventory. You got to come see what he's bringing. He's he's got you for anime. Nice. Period. So what's the date again? It is December second and third, right here in Springfield, Missouri, at, at the Fairbanks the, at the Fairbanks Community Center. And, it, and you guys are supporting the Drew Lewis Foundation. And we're supporting the Drew Lewis cause. Foundation. And we are sponsored by Springfield Studio One and TPS Entertainment. Nice. Thank you very much. And we absolutely want to talk to you about Geekmas, but we're going to hold you over for the 7 in the 417 and find out what your favorite 7 board games are. The 7 in the 417 Gamers is generally our favorite 7 of a given topic. This time it's not going to be ours, me and Andrea's. We've brought a guest because I'm there. I'm the, I'm in your top seven. Yeah. So. Uh, Hawk, let's uh, start from seven and go up, or just give us seven games. Let me just give you seven games because I start from seven and go up, then it'll be all over the place. All right. Um, Number seven. And we'll go with the one that you guys know because I, it's 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 that go to that's in my pack always. Mm-hmm. It's because it's first of all, and it's in my pack mainly because it's small enough to go in there because <laughs> it's full now and that's your fault. Um, um, it's Marvel's Remix yeah. from uh, Wizards. Mm-hmm. I even I I even have the new expansion card that I hate because Squirrel Girl. I can't stand that character. <laughs> I just so I love Marvel Remix because I'm a Marvel fan. I'm a comic book fan. Yeah, and. 
I and you've seen me play. I, when I'm playing it, I am I'm just a comic book nerd reading the cards. Yeah. I don't always win because I'm like, I don't like this. And guy. the first mm-hmm. time you came out, I drug you and Keith into the games and Yeah. And I think Keith had been shoved into some other games where he was there <laughs> for for the wife and was being supportive and then shoved some comic book things in front of him. He's like, Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Marvel Remix is is is, is if it's not number one on the list, I play Marvel Remix once a week. Yeah. Period. It's it's really good. Once a week, period. And that was our filler for probably a good three to three to four months. Yeah, we played yeah. the heck out that of those, those quick games for me, they, they burn out, so I like turning them over and getting quite a few. Right now my our filler is Point City. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that was Namalia. But they usually only last for about a month until we move on to the next one. Well, I'm getting ready to change your 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 filler. Yeah. And it'll stay forever. And it's also my number two on my list. Okay. And I just bought it Monday. I yeah. just played it Monday. And I didn't, I've never played an actual 15 to 20 minute game that was absolutely fun. Yeah. Um, do not play with your family if you like them. Yeah. <laughs> That mean, or, or, or they, or they have feelings of any kind, <laughs> and it's called Fire Tower, mm. and it's just, it's just, it's a wonderful game. Plus, what guy don't remember being a kid want to set stuff on fire? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just arsonists. I mean, I won't tell if you won't. All right, all right, fair enough. <laughs> it is, it is, it's a uh, two to four. I've never played it with two. But it plays wonderfully with four. Yeah. Wonderfully with four. Um, it's just great. It's just great. Number three? Number three. And again, not on not on any any sure. order. It's just one of my favorites. And you know this one as well. Um, it's wonderful to play with Andrea. Mm-hmm. Whether she's drinking or not. And you won't tell yeah. if she's <laughs> drinking or not. And it's it's called Hibachi. Yes. Uh, from uh, Quell Games. Uh, I've recently got to play the expansion, and it's amazing. So it plays five now. Um, and Hibachi is just fun. It's a dexterity game. You guys call it a little dexterity, dexterity a little mm-hmm. set collection. Little, um, uh, if you and if anybody ever plays with Rick, make sure that Rick and Andrew are sitting together because Andrew will turn as many shades of red <laughs> as the color of Rick's shirt <laughs> because of how he plays the. T- <laughs> when it's dexterity and I'm allowed to bump people out of my way, <laughs> I bump people out of my way even if they're not in my way. <laughs> he does. Just for fun. Get out of my way. <laughs> well, it's also sometimes strategy, but mostly for fun. Yes. Mostly. It's it was a, it's 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 a really cool game. It's All right. really, really cool. Fourth. Um number four. Uh just played it recently. Um and it's on this on the on the list right next to a game that has the exact same system uh, Dune Imperium Ooh. and that's one of those things that I was a fan of David Lynch's Dune I just I I, I like the movie I still haven't read the books but we actually like the one that you saw we think the game is more interesting so yes here in the future if you haven't played the, the other one which is Lost Runes of Arnak we'll have you play that I was so <laughs> Ross and Arnick only plays four, and every time I tried to play, somebody's already playing. <laughs> There's already four uh, people, which is, which is terrible for yeah. us. Um, but I liked it. I liked. Yeah. I mean, it was. It's a fun game. Um, it's not the top of my list. Yeah. And, and this, for me, this list is mostly was things I owned. Um, and I like Dune Imperium, but it feels like there's some cards that you can buy that are only early game cards, and then they just waste away in your deck. And then there's some cards that it takes forever to buy, and by the time you buy them, you either cannot use them or you get to use them the one time. Yes, yes, yes. Which takes me to my next one. And this is one, if you have deep pockets, get this one. (laughs) As most of our games are. Yep. Rising Sun is amazing. It's just, it's just, it's just awesome. And that's from Cool Mini or Not, designed by Eric Lang. That is a very good one. Get the Kickstarter version with all other pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, Rising Sun is higher on my list than Witcher. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, it's a lot easier to understand, Mm -hmm. depending on who's teaching you. Don't let Eric teach you. (laughs) He doesn't give good directions. Ah. (laughs) And then um, one of the first. 
board games I bought when I started this run with you guys. When you know, when I had no other friends and I just started hanging out with Rick and Andrew. Yeah. Because I couldn't do no better. Uh, I was in <laughs> Kansas City at a gaming store, and I was like, you know what? I got. I, I'm. I. This is a true story. I'm like, I'm not going to another board game empty-handed, <laughs> looking like looking like a homeless child. Oh. Honestly, we don't mind those that just come in empty-handed because. There are many nights that there are 30 of us here, and we have 20 of us that have big bags yeah, full of games. And I'm now one of them, thank you. Are. Are. Yes, you are. And <laughs> it's like, so who's we going to play? And it's either who's got the newest, shiniest, or loudest and shoutiest. Yeah. And what's funny is when I picked this game, I picked it not... I, I Complete confession. I literally it was like, all right, it's not too expensive. And it doesn't look stupid. And they might not say nothing bad about it. And it's bad company. Yes, bad company's excellent. Hmm. The only thing I don't like about it is I don't play with people enough to really get into it. Like, a lot of these games, we get all into it. Uh, yeah. As far as what's going on in the game. Bad company, you're just playing the game. But it's still really cool. It is. Um, cool. Uh-huh. It's really funny when you play with somebody that's not great at rolling dice, and that that cop die gets two. Two. I taught it. I taught it a month ago. So I didn't play it. I just taught it. And everybody can roll on that, too. <laughs> and I'm like, thank God I'm not playing. <laughs> because I need, I want those extra points. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, uh, Bad Company is one of my absolute favorites. And then the next one, the next few are going to be games that was taught by well, certain You got someone. one more. It's seven. I got one more? Oh, you my got goodness. One more. I only have one. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Because I am guess I'm going to have to put... Uh, it won't be from you. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what it's called now. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. There it is. Yeah. Thunder Road. Thunder Road. Thunder Road. Ah. I've seen you post a lot on that one. Yeah. yeah. I haven't have, I haven't played that with you yet. Uh, no, you played it Mission a couple times, and I think you played it a time or two at yeah, my your Sunday, Sunday night game. game yes. Yeah. You. I. I. <laughs> so I got one upgrade, and there's unfortunately Thunder Road has so many upgrades. There's yeah. like four out there. Um, and I want to get a couple of them. I'm not a big expansion person unless I really love the game. Yep. And Big Rig is awesome. And then there's one that gives you pilots, and that's also kind of awesome, too. Uh, and it gives you so it gives you pilots and extra maps, which mm-hmm. is, with an expansion, maps? Come on, extra maps? Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, well, the expansion for Hibachi is an extra player. Yeah. Thunder Road is an extra map, pilots, new rules, um, more map boards. Just, you know. Right on. And you get to kill people while driving. So well, those are what you said are your top seven games. Yeah, that's that's a good list. And that is a pretty good that's list. That's a good list for me. Uh, before we get out of here, you talked about uh, Geekmas. You plugged that. We'll have notes for that in the in the show. You also do other things off to the side. You have your own podcast. I do. Fanatics and the Fan has been going on. I cannot believe I'm going to say this. Uh, for 10 years, um, Rick and Andrew are two of my f- f- favorite guests because they get as nerdy as I do. Um, Rick more so than Andrew. Andrew just looks at me like, really? I just have strong opinions <laughs> on things, whether they matter to me or not. Yeah, he does, and he's great at it. His imagination... So Fanatics and the Fan is the product of an imagination. It is. It was my attempt to keep my imagination I don't and I always I, when I introduce the show it's, it is a podcast for nerds and we talk about nerd from the inside out I don't mm-hmm. care about Steven Spielberg that much yeah or even Favreau although he's killing it yes he's killing it um, uh, I care about Deadpool and Hulk and Quicksilver how mad is he right now in heaven <laughs> I did all that and y'all still ain't got everything fixed? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> all that sacrifice and y'all still ain't got it right. Nope. Yeah. You know, that's uh, that's what I like. It's keeping the imagination alive and just having fun. I don't need to get serious about it. You know, because I'm not in control of it. I'm not writing for Marvel, but I can tell you my opinions about it. You sure <laughs> you know? And you will. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's just fun. I don't. I'm. I don't. I don't need to take anything seriously. Yeah. I really don't. I. We all have our likes and dislikes. You could. I can. I can list off the, the seven games I dislike just as easily, and I still. I still own them all. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I still own them all. And where can the tens and tens of our listeners find <laughs> your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> We're growing. We're growing. We're growing. <laughs> but um, I love having you guys on. I love uh-huh. being. I love it's. 
For an action fan, and, and I've said this many times, and I didn't know this was going to happen when I started the show, mm -hmm. it's more about the people I have on, the nerds I can bring around me, that I can talk to. Not only, I love getting their opinions. You had some opinions on some stuff that that, that I didn't even never never thought in that direction. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, well, which, when, when she has when she had her opinions on the Harry Potter stuff, or mm -hmm. or even some of the Marvel stuff, I didn't necessarily agree with it, but it was really cool that she was like, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not going to say that. That's not how that... That doesn't... Ex no, that's not what this world is about. Just because the crazy lady's being crazy about the book I read, I still like the book. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's nice... It's nice to be a nerd around nerds and yeah. just not... For just a minute. Yeah. For just a minute. You know, it's, it's, just, it's kind of like having board games in your life. Yeah. You didn't get to worry about everything else around you? No. I love board games because it's somewhere where I can sit with other different people. And I know on Thursdays when I sit there, the political spectrum of all the people sitting at the table runs the gamut left and right. But we all sit down, play games, and enjoy each other's company. Yes. Sit and have conversations. We leave politics at the door by and large. Mm -hmm. I, I rarely hear it pop up. Everybody just enjoys each other's company, which I think... There is an extreme lack of that. Yes. It, but to give you an example, because I know I don't know how much time we have, but I, I've been I've been I've been holding this question in since you asked me to come on because I've been dying to ask both of you. Sure. I always ask, you know, what world would you like to be in? Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But in the truth of it, and I've, I've asked this question a couple of times, in the truth of it, in all of the games that you love love to play. Mm -hmm. What universe, if you were to step into that universe, you, would you just not survive? <laughs> You're no. just done. Not survive? Not survive. You would not do well. Well, my favorite Concordia, because that's da during Roman peace. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of... I'd have to keep my mouth shut, and I run my mouth <laughs> too much to not... <laughs> To not either get conscripted to war... It's like you and Caesar. Or, ...or be on the wrong side of somebody that has more money than me. Because right now, when people have more money than me, I just ignore them or, or make a smart-ass comment and go on my way. Yeah. Just you and Caesar. But just in the Roman times, if you do that... Uh, you know, you, you might find yourself face down in a puddle the next day. It's true. Andrea? Um, what... What makes me say this game, Planet Unknown, is because the last time we played it, there are life pods on the planet, and you can put things over the top of them and squish them. <laughs> but I ended up with more points that way, and I was just squishing <laughs> life pods. <laughs> hey, we we, uh, we have some people that drop by. Just, can you pick them up? Oh. <laughs> uh, those are people? That's... <laughs> No, when I said no. life pod, I thought that was just to help my life. Right, and I was doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, um, have you guys got the expansion for that yet? Uh, no, they kickstarted it this summer, and it will. It's supposed to drop next July, August, if I'm not mistaken. You can tell the diehard plan unknown people by the people by how much they talk about the Kickstarter because it comes with a lid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we've, and we've lost Rick daydreaming about the lid, okay? Yeah. I can't wait for that lid. <laughs> I still need to get a hair or, or a shower cap and put it over it. Yeah. The first time someone ever handed me that game, I forgot what I had in my hand. And I did what I always do in all games now, which I've never done before, but I do it now because I'm one of you people. I read everything. I flip it over. Oh, no. That's like, yeah, that's not a game to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> that's... There, there's a few that are like that, where everything's nice in the tray, and you flip them, and you hear, <laughs> like, oh. So for me, I always said um, that Dune would be the one I wouldn't survive it, because it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot on a racket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if it's just the universe, you can pick a different planet. <laughs> um, yeah, but everything else sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a racket is still cool, and I can't even see it. it? <laughs> yeah, but then it's hot. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't make it. That's that isn't. To, I still say that's one of the most interesting universes ever created. It is, as long as I get to go to a different planet, I'm okay. <laughs> Arrakis sucks. Yeah. It's hot and there's big worms. I don't like either one of those. Yeah. <laughs> well, childhood me, I I know I wouldn't survive, but I'd still want to be hang out with the Fremen. 
again, I'm, I'm still David Lynch's Dune. I love the new series. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the new movie. Sure. Um, but it's the game itself. And I, <laughs> what I find weird about that movie, about that genre, is how many games there are. Oh, yeah. That one and Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. There are so many. Lord of the Rings I get. Lord of the Rings. So the adventure book that I won at Moon City. Yeah. Greatest con ever. Yeah. Somebody else has made it. Because uh, I had the one from Wonder Wonder Bar? Wonder? No. Uh, um, Days Raven, Wonder? Raven, Raven, Ravensburger. Ravensburger. Well, Kronos has basically the exact same game. It just came out. Yeah. And I'm like, and, and there was another one before the one I got. So there's like three adventures mm-hmm. for Lord of the Rings. Yep. Not yeah. counting everything else. And they're mm-hmm. slightly different from one another just by a little bit of mechanics. Yes. Before we get out of here, you have social medias. What are your social medias? So you can find Fanatics and a Fan on everything under Fanatics and a Fan, including TikTok, uh, YouTube, and Spotify. Hey. All under Fanatics and a Fan. Um, we record, we try to record twice a month. Uh, I'm trying to get Rick and Andrew back on, but they're scared of me because I ask them we are. really cr- weird questions. It's true. And I, and I bring it up in, 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 in passing, like at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> But again, or you can find us at Geekmas, yeah. December second and third, at, at the, the Fairbanks, Fairbanks Community Center Very here nice. in Springfield, Missouri. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for we'll having me. We'll see you down pleasure. the road at the next game night. Keep gaming in the four one seven. The 417 Gamer Podcast is recorded and produced by Rick Bagwell and Andrea Smith. We want to thank Hop from Fanatics and the Fan for coming on. I want to remind you that Geekness takes place December 2nd at the Fairbanks in Springfield, Missouri. For tickets, head over to the Facebook links that we'll have. The music we use for our intro, Kind, Gentle, Beautiful Person, and our outro, Making Up for Lost Time, was created by Origami Repetit. With show notes and links to the music and everything else, head over to the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash hobby gaming network. Until next time, keep gaming in the 417.